Are a lot of stadiums set to go? Denver and Notre Dame squaring off. Denver is a tremendously talented team with one of the legendary coaches in the games, won six national championships. He happens to be from the same hometown as I am. He was my gym teacher growing up. How ironic is that? Hey, we played with great boys. Here we go, boys. Let's go. Let's go. I shot three, one, two, three. Hey. Number two scoring offense in the nation for Denver in red at the start of this weekend. 10 roll, 45. You get a horn and we're on D, T.A. Quinn and Near. Defensively, if you're Denver, you take some chances. You get out, you overplay the ball. You want a high shot game. Hard hit delivered to him. Hopkins for Marlat. He scores. Offense clicked at that point. We were you know, averaging five goals a game, which is pretty bad, and we knew it. And we knew we could be good. We knew we could play better. Here's the thing they did the last couple times. They got 18 or 45 up here, and 22's coming up and setting the pick. We got to be ready. Somebody's got to be ready to show in here. And it can't be Randy, because he's going to have to, he, if he comes off 22, they're going to throw back to him, right? Mark Matthews is a matchup nightmare. Kevin Randall's a great on Mark Matthews. Uh, he's a tough guy to play against. He's a big guy. You know, kind of an odd style that he has with his Canadian style. i say definitely going to be the first pick in the indoor league draft. And uh, Randy, we call him Randy, um, did amazing. He really stepped up and just kind of was in his, on his gloves the whole game and uh, couldn't really ask for more. That's a big matchup. I mean, that's two great players and really two stylistically uh, different players. You know, Kevin's a meat and potatoes guy. You know, there's, there's not a lot of flash to his game, but he's as sound and as solid as you're going to, you know, find in the game. And Matthews is a guy with a lot of flair. <laughs> he can make so many different plays and, and, and so creatively and everything else. So I, I thought it was a kind of a really interesting matchup, just not only from, from two great players going against each other, but the kind of clash of styles as well. Offense finally clicked. A lot of different guys contributed. There's not a few guys that are kind of making wow plays. There's six guys working together, and whoever scores is just the one that happens to be at the end of that play. That was perfect. That was perfect. Bullseye! Perfection on offense for Notre Dame. A 4-1 Notre Dame lead. This is where they're dangerous. They're most dangerous when they get down three or four. Quick stick score from Matthews. It's all tied up. Matthews trying to swing by his defender, and Matthews fires. Push it back up top. All right, and I'm on Marlott coming off here. Now it's 8-8. Eight, eight. Marlott scores! Jim Marlott makes it 9-8. Noble back in transition, looking for numbers. Pioneers and Fighting Irish tied up, nine apiece. The third overtime period, Denver and Notre Dame in a thriller from Arlotta Stadium. Let's go, let's go. The boys gather round on both sides. We were just concerned with our guys. It was so hot, and our guys were struggling with the heat a little bit. Obviously, you're in, you know, you're going into your third overtime. We were looking for, for some relief for some of our guys, and and uh, and we couldn't, you know, we couldn't find Mandy. Hey, Mandy, Mandy, come here. Where are you? But she was out on the field taking care of their goalie who had hurt his Achilles. Goalie Jamie Faust appears to be cramping. Initially going out, we thought he had cramped. And I know their athletic trainer, so she was on her own. So I just kind of went out and checked on him first and waited until she was able to get out there to make sure he was OK. Well, she was out there before I was out there. I didn't see him go down. So she kind of got the scoop, let me know what was going on. And, and it was really nice of her to be able to come out and help us out. We're just really lucky to have her. She didn't have to do that. It wouldn't be a bone of contention if she didn't do it. But it certainly adds a lot to the fact that she does and the way that she does it, it's kind of very selflessly. She's just always willing to help other people, no matter what jersey they have on. Priority goes to an injured kid. It doesn't matter if he's on our team or not. I've been taught that Notre Dame lacrosse works like that. The game part of it, who wins and who loses, doesn't necessarily matter. Loose ball, unsettled at the midline. Randall can go over, they're onside. That was a nice, savvy play by a number of guys just to pull off the ground ball at midfield. They kind of lost Sean in that transition and we got him the ball. Rogers fires, he scores! Mr. Sudden Victory does it again!
And it seems like right now, Sean's the right guy to get the ball to at the end of the game. Coach did a great job of having that big picture in mind that we do have three games. The second, you know, Denver is over, started getting ready for Ohio State. We just went an extra quarter with these guys, right? That means we're 15 minutes behind getting ready for Ohio State. Put that in the books. We're back on to the next one. We got Ohio State on Wednesday. One, two, three. Irish.